everyone, welcome back to another Find and Create. So I'm here in the municipal rubbish dump in the Netherlands where I find all my little cute bottles and today is no exception, I've already found these two little tiny ones, these little chemist bottles. Now if you watch my previous videos you'll see that these pop up quite frequently. Now they are cute, they are nice, lovely little colours, aqua colours, uh, sometimes browns. Um, but there's no no logos or anything on them. They're just um, they're just little bottles that would have had a, a prescription in them. So what I decided to do was to make a special video on how I create labels for these bottles, and I also built a cabinet out of um, a, a rather mundane looking unit that I bought from a second hand shop, and that recreates the the chemist shop feel. So I hope you enjoy the video. Please sit back and enjoy, and we'll see you at the end. So here's my next little project. I managed to buy this lovely shelving unit from a second hand shop recently for just 10 euros. Um, lovely bit of old wood. Uh, only problem is these shelves are so small that even a really tiny bottle won't fit. So the options we've got is to either remove each uh, alternate shelf, so I've got more stacking space here, or to actually take um, some pieces of wood and to actually make little dividers and put the bottles in this way so that they're stacked in that direction and mount the shelf in the, the opposite orientation, so on its side. So um, either way, it's going to be all be repainted and it's going to follow the sort of style of an old shop display unit. Right, so we've decided we don't have the wall space to hang this unit on this kind of um, horizontal profile like this. So we're going to go with the original vertical profile and that's going to mean removing every alternate shelf out of this unit. Now, they are sort of pinned in place. I don't know if you can see here how they have these little, little uh, copper panel pins or brass panel pins. Um, and they also have some in the sides and they have some at the back. So we're going to have a little go with, with these tools at trying to remove the shelves without causing any damage. There we are. The nails have been pulled out of the side things and then the, the shelf just pulls out. So it's actually not, not that hard to do. I thought it was going to be more reluctant to come apart than that. So we can now pretty easily remove every other shelf. Uh, it doesn't matter about the, you know, the, the kind of, the, the, the marks it's left on here and, because that needs redoing anyway. So the whole thing can have to be repainted. Right, so I removed most of the shelves from the unit. Um, don't worry, the the white bands you can see are just uh, where the, the wood hasn't been stained by the previous cabinet maker. There's no damage to the actual wood itself. So what I've got to do now is work out where I want my shelves. So we'll have some larger ones at the bottom and then slightly smaller, slightly smaller and so on for the different sizes of bottles. What I decided to do was I flipped the backing ball around. So I took it off and turned it over because the scars on it from the previous shelves being glued to it were going to lead to a lot of sanding down and messing about. So um, just flipped it over so we've got a nice clean surface and then I've positioned the shelves at reasonably um, incremental increases in size. Um, and then the last bit down here, I'm going to put some little drawers, some little kind of um, apothecary style drawers just to give it a bit more character. All the shelves are now fully installed, so everything has been uh, pinned and screwed together. And now what I'm doing is working on the little uh, drawers at the bottom. So I've cut um, one of these longer pieces into smaller sections, and these go in here, and they stand sort of vertical, and then we we'll make the uh, the spacements so that when these are all in we have um, the little box boxes where we can make drawers and they can be pulled out. Right so a quick update on what I've got to so far. 
Um, so the, the spare shelves that we took out of the unit have been cut up and I've turned them into these boxes. So these boxes are the drawers. Okay, so we've got the one in there, one here, one here. As I said, nothing uh, complicated. Just literally cut the, the spare shelves up and uh, pin them together with a little bit of um, some wood board, chipboard stuff that I had um, for the bottom. They're not perfect, it doesn't matter. It's just supposed to be an effect. Um, and I said, that's, th these are just gluing at the moment. That's what they've got the clamps on for. The little runners have been glued in position. So um, yeah, I'm gonna carry on. And as I keep progressing, I'll keep showing you. That's it. The drawers are done. Um, so you just pull out the, little, the red tapes just because I'm just gluing something to the back of it. But you can see here, they slide out. Obviously they still need handles on them. Um, but before we do anything with handles, what we're gonna do is give everything a kind of a, a scruffy paint over with this blue, this pale blue color. Um, the reason is, and you'll see, I'll, I'll put a picture up in a second of the effect I'm gonna try and create. So that's why we're using a little bit of a, kind of a rough over with a blue. Apologies for the light, um, it's a little bit later on in the day now, so it's gone a bit dark, but um, this is where we've got to at the moment. So the unit has been sort of lightly, scruffily painted with um, a sort of a very pale blue, almost white, and then a slightly darker sort of tealy blue. Um, and then deliberately I'm rubbing it back to the brown underneath. And the idea is, at the end, we end up with this kind of effect, which, um, trust me, you'll see at the end with the handles and everything else like that, looks like it's um, many, many years old. Um, bit of a progress report now. So I've been doing a bit of work on the cabinet. The idea of this cabinet is to try and create an old sort of apothecary type um, unit so an old style from a unit that's not that old so before i gave it all a whitewash or a kind of pale blue wash over with paint as you saw before and then i've then gone over that with a green so you can probably see here i've then gone over it with a green paint and i've been rubbing that back to give this kind of distressed wood edge you can probably just see here if i get the camera to zoom on it there and then what I found was that the aqua bottles, just one moment while I get an aqua bottle. Right, so the aqua bottles were somewhat lost against the color. So it wasn't really gonna be a very sort of um, eye-catching display unit. So what I decided to do was to create um, a kind of a crackle paint effect by putting some sort of random darker splodges of paint on the back of the unit and then over painting with cream but using the PVA glue method to create um, a deliberate oldie style sort of crackle finish so as I bring this down and pull back a little bit you'll see more what I mean here so this is deliberate okay this is supposed to be like that so when we have the bottle now on the unit you can see it looks like the cabinet is very, very old. I've also done some paint layering on these drawers at the bottom. So these are going to have um, the kind of, um, I think they're called clamshell or something like that, or, or, or shell-shaped brass handles on them. But uh, again, yeah, you can see there, there's a, a patina that I'm creating just using various sort of shades of green paint and cream paint and just layering things up. So if I bring the bottle down to there, 
you can kind of get the idea of how things are looking. But there's another stage further. I need to create a bit more grandeur from the cabinet itself. So there's going to be some side pieces created and a top. I will show you the process of the crackle effect up here. Um, but now I'm going to push on with the, um, the grandeur uh, sides, which I'll kind of show you an image of so you get the idea what I'm talking about. So here's the ornate uh, zigzag top piece that I'm going to make, which again, look back at the picture, you'll see what it's going to be. Um, and that's simply done by uh, working out that the overall length of this piece of wood is going to be 62 and a half centimetres and dividing that up, it gives 25 um, sort of zigzags. So I've just marked the wood out all the way along the same at the top and then joined up the zigzags. And then, so then drill a hole, drill a hole, drill a hole, and then just join up the things with the saw. And uh, yeah, you'll see. I'll show you in a second what it looks like. There we are. One ornate top edge. Still needs obviously some, some work. So it needs some sanding and things and painting and all those things and some distressing. But uh, that'll fit very nicely on the top edge of there. So I've bolted, or rather screwed, this big thick piece of wood to the top of the unit. I know it's not quite deep enough, um, but I can add another piece to the back. It doesn't matter anyway, no one's going to see it. And then I have screwed up the ornate uh, detailing part to the front of that. And then I've just added uh, a side piece here, a long side piece so that goes down there. And I get a second piece, which I'm going to chamfer off like curve off so so it looks like it's um it's just widening towards the top and then this piece of wood here represents what will be a um kind of carved ornate little rose or something like that and then on top of this this piece will go and that will sit like that so um and then there'll be a piece of beading which will sit underneath here so that will bring this up a little bit and then to the top. So that's where we're at at the moment. And again, I'll carry on and come back to you with another report. So this is where we've got to so far again. Um, I have screwed up these side pieces that form a kind of a an extra border around the edge. And I've done the, the top piece, that's all screwed up. And I've also added these side pieces. Now, I had to cut them with a handsaw because I don't have any special tools or anything. So I've had to just skim over this profile here just to make it a bit smoother with some wood filler. But you can see there that gives a kind of a, um, a shaped top, a little bit more elaborate. And uh, that's all bolted, so it's all not bolted, so I keep saying bolted, all screwed up. And uh, we're at that stage now. A few hours further on, it's now dark outside and I have finished putting all the woodwork together. So we've got the sides um, attached and they've been skimmed with a filler. And uh, I put some ornate um, boxes on here. Um, the ornate sort of apron thing is on. I've put some beading around the top edge up here. So that's, uh, I just painted everything with a, with a quick splash of gray just um, to give it that kind of uh, base coat, that um, silver base coat. I put a really old gnarly piece of wood on the top, which has some, um, it's actually a piece of driftwood. It's got some sort of battering and damage, but again, that kind of, I think that adds to the character. And uh, yeah. So that's where we're at at the moment. Uh, tomorrow I will continue with the cream background here and distress it. Another view from the other direction. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how this is looking. See it's going pretty pretty okay. So good morning all. Here is the cabinet in daylight. So 
I'm happy with the, the way it's looking so far. Um, as I say, the reason I haven't kept the, the green colour in the background is just purely because I think these bottles get lost in the green. You can probably see here. Whereas if I move him down, put it on there, it's more visible. So we're going to do some more painting on the top part now. Um, I will show you how we do the crackle effect thing on the back. My paint choice is simply a mix of this chalk paint, which is an old white, um, with some of the fast drying um, sort of kitchen cupboard paint. And uh, so that's a water base. And then this is a little bit of a kind of a pigment, which just takes the, the whiteness out of it and makes it a bit more sort of um, like a cream color. So they're just mixed together. The chalk paint on its own is just a bit too chalky. Um, it's not very nice to paint with. So that's why I've kind of mixed the two together. This is a PVA glue, wood glue. And all we're gonna do is paint some of that in places onto the areas we want to crackle and split. So we'll just take some PVA glue and say we want it to crackle here. And we're just going to paint it on like that. Not too thin. Just paint it on so that we've got a kind of a, a scruffy coverage. And I'm going to do that for a couple of the areas on here. Where I want the other colour to show through. So I've applied some over here, a little bit on there some down the here and then quite a bit in that corner. And now all I'm simply gonna do is to quickly paint over it uh, using a using a roller um, and just fill all this with, with the cream paint as fast as I can. So I'm gonna put the camera down and do this off camera. So there we go. So what I've done is I've gone over it with um, the roller first and then with a brush. Now, it's really important that if you wanna do this, the brush strokes are going to give you the kind of orientation of the crackle. So you see down here, if you don't use a brush, if you just use the roller, the crackles will be so random it won't look like um, proper split wood. So it's got to be done with a brush. And if your brush strokes are this way, your lines are going to be that way, um, and vice versa, obviously. So the next stage now is to get the hairdryer and go over this with a hairdryer to force the paint to dry quickly and then it kind of shrinks over the top of the glue. So apologies for the noise. Um, hair dryer on, a hot setting. <laughs> as well um, not so heavy on the crackle in there um, but so uh, you can see here now that I'm, I'm, how this one has come out a little bit down there and then more along here so the same in this one so it depends on how quickly you dry it how much glue you use but it just gives that old wood effect After several hours of layering up um, different colours of paint, different shades of greens and uh, blues and adding the sort of distress technique again to create this kind of, it almost looks a little bit like burnt wood, but it's just the, the effect of very old dry paint. Um, the cabinet's pretty much done. Just got to um, do a little bit more sanding 
but um, yeah, the, I'm quite happy with the, the overall sort of age defect that I've created. And uh, when I've finished doing some bit more sanding, I'm just gonna sand the edges. So I've literally just got to sand down the sides, down the edges over here to get rid of some of the rough texture. Um, and then it'll be done. There we are. It is all done, apart from to hang on the wall and to, I need to get some handles for the little drawers on the front. That's it, that's the cabinet. An antique looking chemist's or apothecary unit to display all my little bottles. One more little look with a few bottles on display. So now to make the chemist bottle labels. So what I've done is I've gone onto Microsoft Publisher and I have simply created some text boxes with an ornate sort of scrolly surround and then the chemist's sort of name details etc on the bottom and around the sides. Um, I use Publisher because I'm familiar with it, I've used it for a long time, but I'm sure there's plenty of other programs that might even be better than that. Um, so to get the, the chemist name, all I've done is I've gone online and I've simply typed in um, uh, chemists in the Netherlands, uh, old chemists in the Netherlands, because that's where we live. And there's one that's come up here, look, which is L. Valmoltz of Amsterdam. Um, and it gives telephone number and address. So I've taken that information and I've added it to my labels, as you can see here. And I've created a few more labels because there's lots of different drugs that would have been in stock in those days. So here we have, um, as you can see, flaxseed, Cherokol, extract of lemon, witch hazel, not necessarily the most uh, dangerous things, but there were lots of different ones. And again, if you just simply go onto Google um, and type into Google images, uh, old, you can see old chemist bottle labels, you can see how I've done that. And there you get an example of many of the labels from the time. And again, you can just simply click on the image and you can see here, look, We've got rye whiskey, olive oil, um, castor oil, um, hair oil, various different ones. But I've also looked through for the Dutch ones as well because uh, I want some of the neighbours to to, uh, to be in Dutch in keeping with our, our location. So what I've done is I've then printed these um, labels off and uh, the next stage is going to be the ageing process. So stage one of this aging process is to make this bright white paper into a kind of a, a dirty brownie colored paper. So all we're gonna do, a tea bag and some water. And we're just gonna wet the paper. Now I've used um, a laser printer for this. So I, I don't know if it will work with um, an inkjet printer and, and then you know that the uh, the ink might not run, but as I say, I've not tried the inkjet printer. We just have a laser one, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't cause any problems with the printing. So there we are. That's that's wet, and I put that now onto a radiator and leave it for whatever how long it takes until it go, it's nice and dry. And I'll show you the result of that soon. So here's one of the sheets that has now dried. Now it's a little bit crinkly, but that doesn't really matter. Um, it could be ironed. Uh, you could put it on a on an iron with a cotton sheet over it and iron it flat if you really want it to be. But it adds a little bit of character to the labels and uh, and they get glued onto the bottles anyway. So it really doesn't really matter about the, the crinkliness. So what we've got to do now is to create some sort of staining. So I've got a variety of household food items here. So coffee, balsamic vinegar, um, some, of, some of Linda's wine. Um, there's some paprika powder. There's some red food colorants. Um, this is uh, cum cumin, so the yellow stuff. 
and uh, I've also got an old wine cork for doing like little stamp stamping marks and um, and this is just a lid from a squeezy tube thing uh, and a little paintbrush. So the idea is to create some authentic looking stains, imagining that these have been on the shelf of a, a chemist shop uh, over a hundred years ago. So let's get started and let's see what cool effects we can create. So first things first, a little bit of coffee. So we'll mix that up. And we'll do some, some marking. It wants to be random, just random marks, random stains, um, just building things up a little bit at a time. And also use this a splodge there, splodge there. Trust me, when it dries, it does work. You can even write with it. Let's have a look, maybe their initials. Stain now. Some spots of that. Paintbrush. Just try it off label to begin with. Make it some maybe make it look like something's run down the label. Red food colouring. Keep on doing some extra bits and I'll show you the results at the end. So there we are, a random selection of marks and stains on the, uh, the, fit, the phony labels. We'll let those dry for a while um, and then when they're finished we'll cut the labels out and we'll do a little bit of, um, of distressing to the very edges of the labels. Right, so both of the sheets are dry. Now I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to take some sandpaper and I'm going to cut these labels 
um, carefully separating them equally. I should have left a bit more space perhaps between the labels, but I'll cut that like that. And again, I'll put that there. I'll do the mold, but I'll just show you one for now. So again, making sure that the The ed this edge here is as, as good as possible and the same sort of symmetry on the other side. Okay, so we've got the, the label there. And then all I'm going to do now is just to kind of rough up the edges of the paper because if it was so dirty and so sort of edge looking, it wouldn't be such a crisp, clean cut. So we'll just get some sandpaper and just uh, rough the edges of the labels up a little bit. And what that's doing, if you can kind of you can see there, if you can see on this, uh, move the, just creating this kind of roughed up, slightly sanded edge there. What I can also do, or what I have done, is also just used um, a match and just really, really lightly just singed the edges and then just rubbed it off. That also gives a kind of random uh, pattern there as well. So I'll do the rest of these labels and I'll sand them up a little bit and show you at the end. Another final little effect is just to dip the, the very, very edges of the label in some wine, which will just add another slight texture. And again, when it's when it's wet I can just kind of fray the edges off a tiny little bit as well so again it could just have been affected by age that way when that again when that dries it'll just be a slightly darker shade but um, yeah there we go so here are all the labels all finished and all dried and you can see the sort of oldish effect I'm trying to create um, I'll put one onto a bottle now. So I'm going to add this, add one to one of these chemist bottles using a little bit of children's glue, play glue stuff, um, see if that works. So I'll, I'll add this one to this bottle and we'll see if it looks authentic. There we are. One bottle with one grubby old label attached. Now all we've got to do is Stick all the rest of them on some more bottles. So there we are. A selection of bottles that I've added the labels to. And uh, I think the, the recreation oldie style drugstore labels look pretty good. I'm happy with them anyway. So now we can add these to my newly created apothecary cabinet, which I'll show you in a moment. So all that's left to do is to apply these lovely handles to my little drawers. So I've, um, you can probably see at the top there, I've marked where, the, where I want them to be, the pencil. So I'll drill some little pilot holes. Um, I've got some little brass screws and we'll attach the little handles to all these little drawers. Ta-da! The unit is complete. The handles now finish the job off. And I've decorated the whole unit with various different chemist style bottles. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks in advance for your likes and for your comments. And please consider to subscribe. Thanks again.